In this video, I'll show you how to import elements from Revit into Rhino in Conveyor version 5. In Conveyor version 5, we've made a couple of updates to how these elements come across, and one of the major ones is that there are now sublayers for the different types of model geometry that are coming across as those elements are being imported, and I'll show you what I mean by that here in a second. So on our screen here, we're looking at the Revit sample model, the architectural sample model, and we have Rhino open using Rhino inside of Revit. We've got conveyor version 5 instantiated here, and we can check that it's instantiated by looking at our layers panel and seeing all of these conveyor layers exist. Um, you could also run the command conveyor version 5. To bring over an element from Revit to Rhino, you'll need to select on that element in Revit and then hit this Get from Revit button. So you can zoom in on an object. I'm going to select this one here. And we can see that there's a wall there. There's also these individual windows that are inside of that wall. I'm going to bring these over too. And now that I have my selection ready, I'm going to select Get from Revit. As a side note, there is this drop-down menu here where you could select either a basic conversion, which is what we're doing here by just selecting Get from Revit, that overall button, or the dynamic update version. The dynamic update would mean that if you're changing the extents, the geometry in Rhino, you could push that back into Revit and replace that element rather than redrawing a new one. That only works for some element types like floors, ceilings, roofs, um, so we're not going to do that for this operation. I have selected Git from Revit and you can see those elements imported and at first you might think that there's something wrong with the way that it imported because you can clearly see there's a double surface happening here. If we go back into our layers menu, you'll be able to see what's going on with that. So we have our conveyor layers here. These are the ones that whenever you're drawing something in Rhino and you're classifying using the conveyor panel which element type things are, they end up landing into these layers. There's a new type of layers that have been created for these conveyor reference elements. These are going to be any elements that you're bringing from Revit into Rhino. And within the conveyor reference, there are sub layers for walls and windows. Any element type that you bring over, it will go ahead and create a sub layer for that. Beneath those sub layers, we have an additional level of hierarchy for our layers here and these analytical surfaces I'm just going to turn off windows here for a second so we can see this better but the analytical surfaces are the ones that are creating this solid double surface appearance I'm going to hide everything except for the analytical surfaces so we can take a closer look at that it is a plane at each surface of the wall so this has to do with the wall layers, the number of surfaces that are here. And it is the entirety of the plane. The holes are not there. The openings are not there for any of the elements that are intersecting that plane. And the intent of these analytical surfaces is for you to be able to use them uh, for any, any number of studies that would involve analyzing the total extents of a planar wall, a planar surface. Um, in a lot of cases, if you're using these elements that you're bringing over from Revit to Rhino as a reference, or potentially you want to render something in Rhino or create other graphics that describe the design, you won't need to see those analytical surfaces. So you can turn off that layer entirely. Um, you could delete that layer if you really didn't want it. Uh, it probably doesn't take up too much space in your model if you wanted to just leave it there and turn off the visibility. Um, there's also an invisible layer. This would pertain if you had something that was invisible in your model that was being imported. Um, there's also a contextual and a highlight layer. So these are the ones that are available to us in the API and they're the ones that we're exposing in this new layer hierarchy. Now that I've turned off this analytical surface, I'll toggle it back on and off so you can see the difference. Um, these, this is the actual wall with its cutouts and the proper extents um, and the proper thickness coming from the Revit model into Rhino, so you can reference that. 
with the windows it's a similar thing. I will note that right now the muntins are not coming across as their muntin profiles and the layer that those muntin lines are landing on, those curves, is this visible layer. So if you wanted to see the muntins uh, just with their line work, you could turn that visible layer color from white uh, to black or any other color that you like, or you could extrude those with a profile. Next, let's take a look at bringing over another element type. So um, floors might be a good example. You can see the floor here is a modified turf surface, so it has varying thicknesses, um, and we can bring that into Rhino the same way that we brought in this wall surface. So I'll navigate back to my conveyor panel. I have this object selected and I'll select Get from Revit. So that surface has been brought in. We can see its sort of undulation there. And one other thing that you'll notice is the material has also been brought in from Revit into Rhino. And this material didn't exist in Rhino prior to this element being brought in. It was created as the as the element was imported. If I navigate to its properties here, you can see the material is called grass turf. And if I check out the floor type here, the material is grass turf. So in this case, conveyor is copying the properties of the grass turf material, creating a new material called grass turf in Rhino and applying that material to this floor surface. We're also able to send across elements from floor plans, not just 3D views. So if I navigate to a floor plan and I make a selection, I'm going to filter this down to just the walls and the floors. In this theoretical project, maybe I need to reference just these first floor floors and the walls that are at the first floor and hit apply. So with those walls and floors selected, I'll choose Get from Revit. And these elements are coming across. Uh, you'll notice that the full extents of each of these walls, so whether they go above or below that level one in the Revit model, they are appearing to their full extents on the Rhino side. And as they're coming across, they're also inheriting those materials that Conveyor is creating and placing into the model. To summarize, using the get from Revit function is a really easy and convenient way for you to be able to bring in elements from your Revit model into your Rhino model, have those material settings already be applied and inherited once those elements are on the Rhino side, and to be able to develop your design and coordinate around your Revit model elements in Rhino.